Well, we do believe in manufacturing just in time. Uh, so, yeah, Aaron, I uh, appreciate John and Cap, uh, your leadership, and all of you who are involved in this economic summit. I think it's a very important thing that we do uh, for our state, for our cities, for our businesses, and for our educational institutions. I have spent a lot of time in the last two years thinking about what will be the state of the economy and the workplace in 2030. And how do we begin to educate people, particularly our students, to be ready for that? In this book, in higher ed, we like to read a lot of books. I highly recommend Bob Johansson's book on the new leadership literacies. He suggests that you look 10 years ahead because of the cycles which take time to adopt, to be ready for the cycle 10 years. One does not automatically get ready in two years. And so we think about that, and over the last several years, I picked up this book called The Fourth Industrial Revolution, which is written by Klaus Schwab, who founded the World Economic Forum. And what he predicts in here, through their studies, is that we are into the fourth industrial revolution, which will affect every business, every entity, in not only this country, but the world. And of course, the first was the agrarian revolution when people went from farming, uh, from just gathering to being farmers. And that took thousands of years to really accomplish. And then we went to the industrial revolution, which many of us have read about in school, which took about 160, 200 years to accomplish, where we went from individual labor to mechanized labor to steam and to electricity and to then finally having uh, plants that were fully systemized. Uh, and then we started the digital re revolution in the 60s, which most of us look at this audience have lived through. I was an engineering undergrad and remember the first Fortran computer program I put together, a big stack of cards for the big mainframe. And that has, as we've had now the World Wide Web through the 80s, uh, what, what was, it's interesting, what was thought of as a curiosity, the World Wide Web, the internet, is now an integral part of our everyday life. And no one knew that was going to happen. Uh, somebody named Roy Amara had, has a very interesting idea, and his law is that most individuals will overestimate the impact of technology in the short run but they will underestimate the impact in the long run. And that's why you have to look out 10 years for this industrial revolution. But what's different? And what I've learned is that artificial intelligence is now robust. <coughs> when I was in school, frankly, we talked about could the computer ever implement human intelligence? And we thought not. In fact, artificial intelligence went through 60 years of the winter of artificial intelligence because they didn't have cheap parallel computing. When the gaming industry started to develop, some smart guy at Stanford by the name of Dr. Yin developed graphic processing units so you could have gaming work. That now has been adopted very cheaply in the computers. And so you have cheap parallel computing. What they didn't have before was massive data. We now have massive data available which computers, if you followed what happened with Cambridge Analytica, they're analyzing analytically massive data. And the third ingredient to why artificial intelligence is making a surge right now, if you have Alexis in your home, which is listening to every conversation you have, they're gathering big data. But the reason that artificial intelligence is now, is the third reason, is we have much better algorithms. Algorithms is merely a recipe that you write for how to duplicate processes, repetitive process for the human mind. Right now, it's binary, ones and zeros. But we figured it out. Another smart guy in the University of Toronto figured out the human mind doesn't work linearly. It works almost in three dimensions. So he stacks the uh, algorithms. And so now, artificial intelligence has gone from repetitive processes to cognitive processes. The next step is the human mind. Hey. That's, that's, that's it. All right.
And so when this artificial intelligence is going to be implemented through robotics, the expectation is by 2030, 50% of most tasks will be automated. That means our workforce is going to have to be educated. The expectation is that the repetitive clerical work will go first. Next will be anything that has a mathematical model, which is what most of us do. Accounting functions, actuarial functions, uh, even engineering functions. And so that's all going to change. And so we have to begin thinking about how does the human intelligence begin to interact with all of this? Kevin Kelly has written this book, The Inevitable, talking about this world we're all going through and going to see change. And if you want to realize how it's really made an impact, read about the four. Google, Amazon, Apple, and Facebook. Uh, they have incredible power today. And we have to realize that we're not thinking about the future 160 years from now. It's a 10-year future we have to prepare for. So I know that our legislative leaders are ready to hear all of your ideas, but we're preparing our students for that. Interfacing human intelligence with artificial intelligence, with uh, continued processes of how do you re-educate people. The most important factor in the next 10 years will not be what knowledge do you have, it's how are you able to gain the new knowledge to compete in the new world. So I wish you well, I thank you all for coming here. We depend on you, those of us who are Rhode Island citizens, to figure this out and help us all be thriving in the future. We'll do our best in education. Thanks very much.